when I posted my review of Solo Leveling on my YouTube channel, a fellow anime watcher shared an anime worth watching. I had never heard of an anime called Shangri-La Frontier, but I was not disappointed when I watched it. I always thought it was high stakes to make an anime great, but Shangri-La Frontiers proved me wrong. Shangri-La Frontier is a VR game in the anime that follows the gaming escapades of Rakuro Hizutome, initially introduced as a trash game hunter. These gamers are the ones who make it their mission to beat the most bug-ridden, bad games exploit the game's bugs, and finish the game. Mainstream games in this world are essentially VR games, and all games played on a screen are considered retro. Although the setting has no life and death situation, the stakes are still high, as Hizutome is out to give every game his best, and each situation is relatable for all gamers. The story is set presumably during the summer vacation in a future Japan, since it seems that everyone is just playing games on VR. The show introduces us to Hizutome as a trash game hunter, who is an admirer of faulty, buggy, rushed games. The challenge in such a game is the game being so bad that beating the game itself is a huge challenge, either due to bugs or frustrating mechanics. While looking for a new game, the game store owner asks him to try an ongoing rage, a AAA title called Shangri-La Frontier. Hizutome decides to give it a shot and is soon pulled into the game. Hizutome joins the game as a bird-faced character called Sanraku and due to his prior experience playing games staked against the players, soon feels comfortable in the new setting of a game with proper and well-designed game mechanics. The story also has a minor romance angle as it is revealed that the game show owner is a friend of Rei Saga, a girl who has a crush on Hizutome and wants him to start playing so that the two have something in common to build a relationship on. The main characters in the show are Sanraku, that is Rakuro Hizutome, but ends up being a big deal in the AAA title Shangri-La Frontier. He does so by being part of the first group of players to defeat one of the seven colossi. Saga Zero, or Rei Saga, is a high-level player in the world of SLF. In real life, she has a huge crush on Hizutome and one of the big reasons Sanraku ends up playing this game. Saga Zero is well known in the world of SLF and is considered one of the best in the game. Arthur Pencilgon, also called Towa Amane, is another high-level character whom Sanraku knows from other games they have played together. She is shown to be a ruthless, no-nonsense player whose sole aim is to defeat one of the undefeatable Colossi in the game. She knows a lot about the game and is the main strategist in their first fight against Weathermon, the Tomb Guard, one of the most powerful in-game bosses. Another character in the group is Kardzo, who is another big shot trash game hunter friend of Hizutome. He too is invited by Pencilgon to get together and form a band of players to take on the mighty Colossi in game. His real life persona is briefly shown as a wealthy big shot esport gamer who is into fighting games. Amul, who is an NPC, is a rabbit sidekick to Sanraku, a sidekick which he receives when he unlocks a unique scenario in the game. Amul is a great help who often ends up getting Sanraku out of difficult situations during his fights with world bosses and other players. Why Sache is king of the land of Rabituza, a land to which Emul belongs. He acts as a mentor and guide to Sanraku in the initial half of the show. Other than the main characters, there are many other NPCs and fellow players introduced in this show who are responsible for many interactions which make this show fun. The animation is usually run of the mill, but the action is very good. The show is easy even for non-gamers as every aspect of gaming, which may seem straightforward to a gamer, is explained when such terms are used. The characters are nice and fun, with Emul being a cute sidekick to Sanraku. The show frequently refers to many topics like online forums, game wiki, the developers' take on games they have built, etc. This is not a high-stakes, world-ending kind of series. This helps in allowing the protagonist to fail. So it is not obvious how a battle would end, since Sanraku can fail, get better, and fight again. Every problem and the events happen within a virtual world of Shangri-La Frontier, and 80% of the show is in this world. As the show is low-stake, it can't be compared to solo leveling in terms of end goal. This is a fun show, with as deep a lore as you can expect from an RPG game. Every event is a piece of code, every enemy, boss, 
NPC is playing a role they are meant to. Death leads to response. The players either play for fun or for bragging rights. These aspects make the show fun to watch. The boss battles, buffs, debuffs are all really well designed. The game frequently delves deep into in-game mechanics, which can give you some tips on how to approach the games you play in real life. The lack of high stakes is one of the reasons that season 1 did not end on a cliffhanger. But still, I would love to see what this world will bring into life of Sanraku. I'm surely looking forward to how the relationship between Rei and Hizutome evolves as the series progresses. The next season is expected to come out in October 2024. The easy watch and relatability for a gamer makes Shangri-La Frontier a fun watch. This show is 8 out of 10 for its easy watch and gamer relatability. Have you watched this show yet? What do you think about this show? Let me know in the comment section and subscribe to this channel for more stuff related to anime. And special thanks to Top Kazak, hope I'm pronouncing that right, for recommending this amazing show. Hope you have a great day. Goodbye.